Good morning, God's people. This is Sunday, January the 16th. We are right in the middle of the month and uh, we have gathered together this morning. This is the call to worship. And the psalm is in Psalm 35 and verse 18. He said that I will give thanks in the great assembly among thongs of people, I will praise you. That is his call to worship to us this morning, that we will give thanks with a grateful heart to the Lord uh, among all the people. And we will give praise to the Lord our God for all his goodness towards us. God's word to us this morning is coming from the book of Genesis. So I will direct you to the book of Genesis with me. And Genesis, uh, we will be reading a few passages and, uh, and verses in, in Genesis. Uh, the first one would be in Genesis chapter 6. We will be reading verse 8 to 10. Genesis, Genesis chapter 6 reading verse 8 to verse 10. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. This is the account of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Jepheth. Let us now go to uh, verse 22 of Genesis chapter 10. Genesis chapter 6, sorry. Genesis chapter 6 and uh, the same chapter we were reading it, but now in verse 22, the last verse. Noah did everything just as God commanded him. Let us turn to chapter 7, Genesis chapter 7, we will be reading verse 5, Genesis 7, reading verse 5, and Noah did all that the Lord commanded him. Let us move on to Genesis now, chapter 9, Genesis chapter 9, and we will be reading in Genesis chapter 9. We will be reading verse 18 to 29. Genesis chapter 9, reading from verse 18. And uh, we will read verse 18 pretty much to the end of the chapter. And that is verse 29. Genesis chapter 9, starting to read from verse 18. The sons of Noah who came out of their ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Ham was the father of Canaan. These were the three sons of Noah, and from them came the people who were scattered over the earth. Noah, a man of the soil, proceeded to plant a vineyard. When he drank some of its wine, he became drunk and lay uncovered inside his tent. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw his father's nakedness and told his two brothers outside. But Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it across their shoulders. Then they walked backward and covered their father's nakedness. Their faces were turned the other way so that they would not see their father's nakedness. When Noah awoke from his wine and found out what his youngest son had done to him, he said, Curse be Canaan, the lowest of slaves. Will be, will he be, to his brothers? 
he also said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem. May Canaan be the slave of Shem. May God extend the territories of Japheth. May Japheth leave in the tent of Shem. And may Canaan be his slave. After the flood, Noah lived for 350 years. Altogether, Noah lived 950 years, and then he died. The word of the Lord to us this morning. This is the time of the worship where we worship the Lord uh, by uh, with our prayers. Prayer is a part of our worship, and uh, we worship the Lord uh, with prayer because in prayer we acknowledge our total dependence upon the Lord, and uh, prayer automatically get us in that mood that we are going to talk to our Father, to whom we are totally uh, dependent on. So we'll go and pray this morning. Remember to pray for the situation with COVID-19 all around us, especially the new, uh, the new uh, uh, type of uh, uh, variant that has come through the COVID-19, the Omicron variant, uh, variant that has come to us through it. It is really causing a lot of problem in the community and also all around the world. God knows about it, people. We, don't, we just need to trust him with it. That in his own time, he will make all things beautiful. In the meantime, let us do all that we can to protect each other. Let us really pray for one another. Let us pray for those who are sick in our means, for the sick in your family. Let us pray for the youth in your family and also those who are in our means. Pray for our seniors. Lift them up before the Lord in prayer this morning. Let us not forget each other when we pray, especially when we pray in the worship that the Lord who hears our prayer and prayers that he will in his own time touch those whom we love and then in the world shall we pray together remind us anew today that you are always with us O Lord that circumstances surrendered to you become stepping stones to high purposes, that crushing blow left in your hands to do to heal and become teaching tools for our survival both in this life and the life to come. That illness may weaken and even destroy the body, but will not destroy our soul. Help us to trust you more fully and to remain faithful in all circumstances, as did those first followers whom you taught through Christ our Lord. Heavenly Father, we come before you this day humbling ourselves in prayer to you. Lord, we are thankful for quiet moments of thought, still times of meditation, closets where prayer become real, Periods when life is bathed in song. We are thankful 
for eternal words to read. Oh, the Holy Bible, our best companion at all time. Challenging poems to memorize and sacred songs to remember. We are thankful for your breaking of our defenses by the help of your Holy Spirit. Your insertion of yourself into our broken lives to make them whole again. You are enabling us to come face to face with our weaknesses without being destroyed by them. Oh God, our oh God, we come confessing to you this morning our sins. We have not been what we were made to be. We have not lived up to the one who is our father, the one who is our creator, who has made us in his own image, who has stamped himself into our image and our personalities to be like him. Forgive us for the sins of comparing ourselves to others. Until we live up to our calling from the Lord Jesus Christ to walk with him and talk with him and to deal with each other just as he would deal with us. Forgive us that we are not living our, up to the expectations that you have had for us, O oh Lord. O oh, Heavenly Father, help us to come closer to you as you come closer to us. We are thankful that we can have this sacred hour in which we pause to worship you every Sunday, wherever we are. We can all virtually gather together in the name of Jesus and worship you. Reflect and say these, this word of gratitude that well up in our hearts at the wonder of your love and grace. Now we pray, O oh Lord, for those who are sick among us. We pray for healing. We pray for those who are suffering from COVID-19. Oh Lord, we present this pandemic to you. Yes, we confess, oh Lord, that we are tired of it. For some of us, it has been a little bit much. Oh Lord, we pray for those who have aunties and uncles loved ones that are in the hospital. Oh God, we pray that you will be their companion. You will be their healer. We pray for those who are suffering all over the world from the effect of COVID-19. Be their portion, we pray. Now we ask that this hour be filled with your spirit and that we be called to your love and purpose in the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, may the word preached to us this morning come with life from above and that it will penetrate us and meet our needs. And that indeed and in fact, O oh Lord, we may be able to say that it has been good to meet with you. We can trust you in all things. We can trust our tomorrows into your hand because you are God and you never fail. To that end, we pray 
and give you all the glory in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ who loved us and gave himself for us. Amen. Let us turn to the Holy Scriptures that was read to us here in the book of Genesis. And this morning, the title of God's word to us is A Faithful Man. Yes, there are great examples of faithful people that have been left for us in the Holy Scriptures. Their, our ultimate faithfulness is in the Lord himself who loved us and gave himself for us but he has left us examples of good men who has lived their lives in faithfulness to the Lord and as we start this year of 2022 and going uh, through it week by week months by month we must really behold before us the examples of those who have lived a faithful life to you and before each other. So this morning, uh, we want to uh, highlight Noah. And our text is in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. In the NIV, we read it that way. This is the account of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time. And he walked with God. The story is told of a, uh, of a homeless dog. We all have known dogs to be the best friends of men and the faithful friends to many. So this story was told of a homeless dog of mixed breed charted, exploring up to a century outside of St. James Palace. The ground was covered with snow and the dog was cold and hungry. The sentry picked up the dog, fed him, and named him Jake. Jake became greatly attached to the sentry whose regiments the Scots guard adopted him as a mascot. Jake the dog went through the Crimean War with his master always at the side of his master in the battlefield. When his master fell, mortally wounded, Jake stood faithfully by his master until both were removed from the battlefield. Hearing of the splendid service recorded of the noble dog, we are told that Queen Victoria was deeply touched by the story of that faithful dog. She had a miniature Victoria cross made which she had placed on Jake's collar. God also rewards his faithful people I remember a dog named London that has been the companion for my daughter for 11 years. I remember spending my uh, the last day with that dog because he was sick with cancer. The dog was very sick and weak. The dog was in pain 
we could see. He could hardly walk. And we see his faithfulness and his love for his mistress, in this case my daughter. And his sickness and his weakness, when almost that we could see as human beings, there was nothing left in him. He remained beside my daughter wherever she would move in that apartment he would he would crawl very slowly in his pain just to be beside her he remained faithful until death god also rewards those who are faithful to him he rewards those people that are faithful to him. Noah was a man who remained faithful to God during adverse circumstances. We indeed and in fact are going through adverse circumstances. We have been faced with situations that we have never faced before. We have been called to suffer things that we have never suffered before. It is all new and strange to us. When God, this morning, in spite of the circumstances, in spite of COVID-19 and all the other loss in our lives, in the sickness that we have been going through, in the loss of work and, and jobs in our lives. God has called us in reminding us that faithfulness to him is far above everything else that we are called to remain faithful unto our God. So let us learn some lessons here this morning in a hall to be faithful. Noah has something to teach me and he has something to teach you. Let us really pay attention to some of the lessons that Noah has left for us here. First, to be faithful one must be loyal to God. Other claims clamor for loyalty. There are all kinds of situations in the world and other people in this world that are claiming for our loyalty. The people in Noah's day lived apart from God. Look at Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5. God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. People decided to walk in a different direction than the direction that God has laid down for them from birth or from the creation of the world. The days of Noah is no different than our days. People have taken deliberately a different direction in life than that that God has wanted them to take. They have become their own God. They have reserved the right to make their own decisions and to do things their way. So therefore, they have turned their backs on God's way. God was deeply grieved, we are told in the Holy Scripture, over the people's sin against him. Whenever God looked, he saw only corruptions. 
that is no different in our days. All around us, we see corruption. Governments who are supposed to be the protector of the people in service of the people, they are corrupt. Churches who are supposed to be there, leaders in the community that are supposed to be there protecting, guiding and leading their people, we watch them become corrupt. Even in the family, children and parents alike, instead of really serving in the family the way God has really planned for the family to be, they have become corrupt. Violence has become in the days of Noah the thing of the day. God has made us to live in harmony and in love and in unity. They have chosen violence, violence towards each other. And that has not even changed in our days. The magnitude of violence all around us has left us wanted. Yes, violence was the thing in the day of Noah. And uh, the attitude was a departure from God's way and God's ways of life for them. That is no difference in our days. Noah could have walked in the direction of the world. Noah could have said, I will do just like everybody else. Noah could have said, I don't want to take upon myself the responsibility of having to be different, different and different in the world. Noah could have walked in the direction that everybody else is going. Noah could have said to God, everybody else is doing it. So why should I be different? Why should I be different? Why should I make a difference in this world? Without a doubt, the pull and the pull of the world was a strong factor in Noah's day. And the pull of the world is a strong factor in the lives of God's people even today. What is pulling you away from a life of devotion to the Lord? What is really hindering you from a life of loyalty to God? What is really the struggle between going to have your devotion and going to spend time with the Lord in prayer? What is the struggle is with? Is it your television? It is the friendship with somebody else. What is the distraction? Noah had faced all that. The Holy Scripture tells us in chapter 6 and verse 5, everybody have decided to go their own ways. Faithful people must have a single-minded loyalty. Our loyalty cannot be here and there and everywhere. If God be God, serve him if you have other god in your life serve them there is no room and no place in this world today for us to be neutral and going back and forth between two opinions the conjunction that we read here in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 8, the conjunction but introduces Noah as a different kind of person. 
in another word, everybody in the world is doing this, but you, you can put your name in it, have taken a different direction than everybody else when it comes to the Lord in, the, in service to the Lord. Noah, uh, Noah as, as a servant of the Lord has taken a different kind of direction because Noah was a different kind of person. He decided to be faithful to God when everybody else, when everybody else was not. He decided that uh, as Joshua did, as for me in my house, we will serve the Lord while everybody else household in the neighborhood are doing their own things. Noah has decided to be faithful to God. He was righteous and blameless, the Holy Scripture tell us, and he walked with God. In our Bible study every Wednesday night, we are speaking and we are talking about that walk worthy of the Lord, that worthy walk with God. Noah was one personified as walking worthy of the Lord. He dare to be faithful to God when the majority move in the other direction. When the majority of the people around him, they were pleased to do something different than that he, he wanted to do. How about you and me? How loyal are we to our God? How loyal are we to him and our devotion each and every day to him? How loyal are we dedicated to him to study his word together? How loyal are we to hold the Bible still as the word of God and get into it and let it only has the authority over our lives to direct our lives, to instruct us in all things about our lives? How loyal are you to the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ in this world? It may not be a popular thing. It may not be what everybody else is doing. How loyal have you found yourself? Well, let's just think of a new year resolution even two weeks after, uh, after the new year. To be precise, 16 days after the new year. And the 16th day that we can still say, Lord, I want to be loyal to you. I want to be one of your loyal servant forward in this new year of 2022. Secondly, to be faithful, one must obey God's word. That's what Noah did. God gives instructions and his instructions are in the holy book. I, I want to read for you uh, as you follow me in Genesis chapter 6. We will start reading from verse 11 to verse 21. Some of the instructions that God has given to Noah. Please turn with me to Genesis chapter 6. We will start reading from verse 11 to the end of the chapter. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourselves an ark in, in Cyprus wood. Make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 450 feet long 
75 feet wide and 45 feet high. Make a roof for it and finish the art to within 18 inches of the top. Put a door in the side of the ark and make lower, middle, and upper decks. I am going to bring flood waters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens. Every creature that has the breath of life in it, everything on earth will perish. But I will establish my covenant with you and you will enter the ark. You and your sons and your wife and, and your son's wives with you. You are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Two of every kind of bird and every kind of animal and of every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. You are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and store, in, and store it away as food for you and for them, the animals. Noah did everything everything just as God commanded him. Yes, Noah in his faithfulness to the Lord obey God's word. And as it is recorded for us here in, in the book of Genesis chapter 6 and verse 11 to 21, it is recorded God's instructions which must have seemed strange to Noah. Can you imagine that God will tell Noah to go to the highest mountain in the country to build a boat, an ark? Strange, isn't it? God told Noah about the end of the earth. Strange. We have seen the universe and we have seen the earth and we have got accustomed to it and we love the beautiful world in which we live. God told Noah, I'm going to put an end to the world as you have come to know it. God said unto Noah, look at verse 13 here of Genesis chapter 6. God said to Noah, the end of all flesh, the end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. The Lord commanded Noah. Look at verse 14 of Genesis chapter 6. Make yourself an act of, of cypress wood. Make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. The following verses record really for us God's specific instructions to Noah's regarding the ark. Every measurement, how it was supposed to be built, was given to Noah. Noah, Noah was paying attention. Are you paying attention to God's instructions? Are you paying attention to God's instructions for your life? To the very, very, very little details of your day. Noah was faithful. Noah was obedient to the Lord. And that's what led him to a life of faithfulness to the Lord. Noah followed every instruction that God has given him. The 
verses here tells us that Noah regarding uh, the Lord as his master that the Lord God was his God and that it, it meant the world to him that he follows God's instruction instead of even the instruction of government, the instructions of other people in his life. To Noah, obedience to God, obedience to God was far most more important to him. Make yourself an ark. And he followed that. He followed that to the T. The specific instruction that God has given him. Furthermore, the Lord told Noah to gather two of every species of animal for the ark. What a tremendous task. If Noah had already two of the goats, he couldn't take any more. Even if he likes to. What is that teaching you and I? That even though you and I may have different ideas than that of God, because we may see a little goat kids and we say, oh, this one is so beautiful. God did say only to have two, but I'm going to have one more. Not Noah. God said two, one male, one female. Noah, follow God's instruction to the T. Oh, my friend and my brother and my sisters in this day, oh, let us be challenged to follow God's instructions for our world, to follow God's instructions for our lives, to follow God's instructions for our family, to follow God's instruction for His world. Too often, we are getting off the track doing our own things and following the instruction of others. Books are great. I love books. I love to read books. But books are not the Bible. God has called us to follow His instruction from His words. Yes, there are some great motivation speakers all around us. They are motivation speakers. They are not preachers of God's word and God's gospel. Which one will we choose? Noah have chosen to follow God's words. Sometimes God's instructions seem strange to our ears. For example, he says to love instead of hate. And we said, you don't know the people that I'm dealing with, sir. That's why you're telling me to love them. They do not deserve my love. They do not deserve kindness. They do not deserve gentleness. I will decide really whether they should get my kindness or my, uh, my gentleness. But God has called us to love one another. God has never asked his children to hate anyone. Turn the other cheek. The Lord Jesus Christ instructed us in the Sermon of the Mount. And we say, oh no, that's ridiculous, we said. Why should I turn the other cheeks? That is not wise. That is not smart. I will not give somebody my other cheeks. I will fight back. I will take revenge for the first slap in the first way, in the first time that it happened. Go to the second mile, the Lord said. Oh, we have made up our mind. We will not even go one mile. Less second mile with anyone. In another word, the Lord said that when somebody asks you for one, give them two. When it is really up to you and you want to follow God's word and follow God's instruction for our lives, it is never an easy thing to do. The Lord say, go the second mile. There's someone in our lives right now that we learn 
we must learn to go the second mile with them. There may be a situation in your life and in my life right now, we must learn to go the second mile. The Lord asked Noah to have gone the second mile and overcome evil with good. Oh, listen, every cell in our bodies, when somebody has done us evil, is to get them back. Is to do the same evil they have done to us back to them. Or even to wish, if we are not able to do it, somebody else will do it. Or life will teach them a lesson. The Lord Jesus Christ has instructed us and he has called us. He has called us to overcome evil with good. Sometimes God's instructions seem strange, isn't it? God expects obedience. God expects obedience in spite of the unusual instructions. Noah in Genesis 6 verse 22, Noah did everything just as God commanded him. Noah obeyed in spite of ridicule. Yes, the Holy Scripture tells us that there were people that said, Noah, are you out of your mind? You are building a boat in a mountain away from the coast, away from the lake away from the sea this is ridiculous this is the worst fool i have ever met they have said maybe even noah's own family members were ridiculing him for this grandiose idea that he was going to build an ark in the mountains oh the lord god has instructed noah and noah was going to follow everything that God has told him and never even to ask questions and never to ask the Lord, Lord, I will not move to do it until all is explained to me and all before I can understand every instructions that you have given me. Noah obey in spite of the ridicule. Spectators must have laughed at the idea of a great flood and the crazy concept of building an ark. Being faithful amid ridicule is difficult. It is very difficult. When Nehemiah sought to build the walls of Jerusalem, his opponents belittled the effort. Look at Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 1 to 4 with me. Nevertheless, Nehemiah remained faithful and the wall was built. Please turn with me. Let us see the word of the Lord to Nehemiah and, uh, and that that his instruction from the Lord was, uh, was followed to the T and that he uh, was not going to let the ridicule of others to persuade him not to follow God's direction for his life. And this is for the same for you and for me. That as we, as we follow the Lord in our days, yes, there are times we are going to be ridiculed by others. But the Lord has said so. And we are going to obey it. Nehemiah chapter 4, reading verse 1 to verse 4. When Shandalat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, he became angry. And was greatly insane. He ridiculed the Jews in the presence of his associates 
in the army of Samaria, he said, what are those feeble Jews doing? Will they restore their wall? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? Can they bring the stones? Can they bring the stone back to life from those heaps of rubble? Burn as they are? To obtain the Amorite who was at his side said what they are building if even a fox climbed on it he would break down their wall of stones hear us our oh god our god oh our god for we are despised turn their insult back on their own heads give them over as plunder in a land of captivity do not cover up their guilt or blot out their sins from your sight for they have thrown insult in the face of the builders yes yes nehemiah nehemiah have stood up in spite of the ridicule have you been ridiculed lately for your faithfulness to God? For your obedience towards God? Have you been discouraged by what others have been saying about you? Oh, that Noah and Nehemiah would really encourage you this morning from God's word. Do what God wants you to do in spite of what everybody else is doing in your means. Thirdly, to be faithful, one has to resist the world. One has to resist the world. The Lord Jesus Christ instructs us, do not love the world, nor anything that is in the world. The world has its attractions. Noah was a faithful man. Some Old Testament scholars call him an extraordinary person. Even extraordinary people, however, are susceptible to become ordinary when conform to the world. Paul in the New Testament and in the book of Romans said, do not be conformed to the world. Instead, transform the world. The world has many attractions for you and for me. Liquidative offers that the world has to offer to you and to me. For a long time, for a long time, Noah lived above the temptations of his times. Everybody else but his family were doing what they wanted to do. They have turned their backs against God. Noah was not going to do that. But in a moment of weakness, I want you to notice that. In a moment of weakness... In a moment of weakness, Noah has done something to prove that he was fully human. Noah has drunk so much of the wine that he has made. Noah has lost his senses. Oh, what does that mean to you and to me? Or maybe you have not lost your senses because of wine. And because of alcohol, although many have lost their senses because of wine and alcohol, alcohol have made a fool out of you. Alcohol has turned you into the worst of fools in your family and, and, uh, and all around the, the community. Noah, it happened to him. Yes, Noah 
this faithful man who walked with God sleep. Noah, this faithful man who was with God was also uh, uh, was also a, a sinner. Noah, this faithful man who walked with God was also tempted, was also disobedient at time and have turned his own way. He was tempted. In a moment of weakness, he got junk. He got junk. What are you junk with? What is it that you have had too much of? What is it that you are getting too much of? That is getting you senseless. That is getting you uh, behaving like a fool. It happened to Noah. The world has its attractions. The world is keep on calling you to disobey God and to do your thing. Because the world is keep on telling us if we want to be happy, do what I said. And in a moment, you and I, no matter how strong we have been, can be weak and fall just like Noah did. The world must be resisted. The world must be resisted. In the book of James, the Holy Scripture called us to resist the devil. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. The world and the devil, the prince of this world, the devil himself, must be resisted. The story of Noah's sin teaches us that temptation can defeat us. Oh, so many of us are no longer following the Lord Jesus Christ. So many of us are no longer praying. So many of us are no longer reading our Bible. So many of us are no longer even put that video up to watch it. So many of us have jumped out of the race. So many of us are, are on the side of the road. We are no longer walking in the narrow way. So many of us, Noah, have let the weakness, the temptation defeated him. For many years, Noah resisted the power of the devil. But in a weak moment, he succumb to the pool of the world. Hey, you and I can identify with Noah. For in a moment, the world can convince us that the ways of the world is better than the ways of God. Oh, that this Sunday, you and I will be awakened to the schemes and 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 the and and the sneaky ways of this world, and and remain faithful to our God and loyal to our God and obedient to our God, just like Noah did. Temptation often strikes immediately after a great victory. Yes. What a victory. He had obeyed the Lord. He has built the ark just as God has commanded him. Victory celebration was there. He and his family were spared. And yet, in a moment of weakness, Noah disobeyed. One constantly needs to be aware of the susceptibility of yielding to temptation. Oh, woe to you, woe to me, that we feel that we are beyond temptations. Woe to me and woe to you, that we would feel that we do not need to watch and pray. Woe to 
me and woe to you that we get so uh, spiritually uh, pride and and popped off that we have forgotten that we still live in the flesh oh as peter said yes lord the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak oh noah noah have taught us that too that to be faithful one has to resist the world one has to resist the devil oh let us really make up our mind this sunday that we are going to resist the world and resist the devil do you want to be recognized as one as one of god's faithful person one of god's faithful servant do you want to be recognized as one that has been unfaithful to the lord do you want to be recognized as a faithful person or do you want to recognize as an unfaithful person oh may the holy spirit of god this sunday lead me and lead you and making the decision just as joshua has called the people of god choose today choose you today whom you will serve choose today if god be god let him be god and serve him of course you may want you may want to say to to yourself and say pastor i want to be faithful to the lord i want to remain faithful to the lord until death to be faithful you need to learn lessons from noah you need to learn to be loyal to god you need to learn to obey god and follow his instructions and you need to learn to resist the devil oh may god in his mercy help you and help me in this life to follow him and to be faithful to him let's have a faithful week let's have a faithful sunday Let's have a faithful month. Oh, if we, if we can only dear, let's have a faithful year. Let us pray. Now may the God of all creation, whom we know as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, will guide your ways in the days of this week. Let us declare now that our intentions will be noble as we live for God's kingdom and for the cause of his kingdom now and forevermore. 